Hey guys, this is Professor Vood, live from Cambodia, and this week we're gonna go over free radical halogenation. Okay, so what does that even mean? So free radical is essentially, you're gonna have to get familiar with the word radical. And if we go down here, it gives a nice definition for radicals. It says the result of homolytic bond cleavage in which free radicals are formed also refers to the reaction of free radical. So it's either the production of a radical or the reaction of that radical. Um, and here we have the definition for a free radical. An atom bearing a valence shell orbital occupied by a single non-bonding unpaired electron. So it just means one unpaired electron, highly reactive. Um, wanting to stabilize. So, well, this week we're going to perform the monochlorination of 2,3-dimethylbutane, and I've drawn you this this uh, this um, chem compound over here, 2,3-dimethylbutane. Um, so we've got uh, methyl, or uh, sorry, we've got butane right here. We've got there's the first carbon, the second carbon, the third carbon, and the fourth carbon, and 2,3-dimethyl has one methyl group right here and one methyl group right here. And so when it says free radical uh, substitution, we're going to essentially try to add a chlorine either to here or to here. And so this would be replacing a primary hydrogen. And what that means is that that hydrogen is bonding to a carbon which is only bonded to one other carbon. So the hydrogen that would normally be in the place for this chlorine would be bonded to this carbon, which is only bonded to this carbon. Whereas down here, this would be on a tertiary hydrogen. And the reason for that is because this carbon is bonded to three different carbons. So it's bonded to this one, this one, and this one. So that would be a tertiary hydrogen substitution. So we are gonna essentially be looking at uh, adding chlorine and then studying which one of these reactions occurs more um, depending on, uh, well, depending on, on uh, a few different different uh, things that we're going to look at here. So, if we scroll down, essentially it's saying when you react chlorine gas with UV light, you excite it, it breaks up into free radicals. Now, chlorine gas uh, is a very toxic compound, so we will not be using chlorine gas for, for our... Um, free radicals in, in this lab. And now here we have three steps in the free radical process. So you need to initiate the reaction. Essentially you've got chlorine but it's stable um, and so that's why for example in this uh, up here we've got UV light is our initiation step. So then you've got the propagation step uh, and if you read it in the propagation step the chlorine radicals attack the uh, attacks and bonds with the hydrogen of the alkane. So in this case it'll attack one of these and finally there's termination which occurs whenever two free radicals combine so if you've got extra free radicals um, and they bond to each other that's kind of you know the termination step so this week we're going to use and let's see we've got a procedure okay so we're gonna use um, bleach which we've, is written here as sodium chloride and oxygen and we're gonna use hydrochloric acid and this is going to produce the toxic chlorine gas and salt and water. Well, we already have a lot of water, but this is going to be essentially kind of the mechanism that we use. So, well then, you, uh, well, after we form the chlorine gas, we're going to use UV light to start our initiation step. And then our, here our propagation step is shown and then our termination step is also shown and you can form a few there's a few different things that can terminate the reaction okay so let's talk about the procedure and before we start I just wanna really really strongly tell you guys that toxic chlorine gas is generated in this experiment therefore we have to perform it under the hood and be very careful not to uh, you know stick your head under the hood and try to sniff this chlorine gas because it is very very toxic uh, joke, of course. I know you guys are all professionals that will not be sticking your heads under the hood, but just for that one, you know, one person that might think about it, uh, I wanted to mention that. Okay, so our first procedure is we're going to dispense some of this dimethylbutane, which we have right here, which is going to be in the fridge, into a 10 milliliter cylinder. We're then going to transfer it into a screw top vial, and we're gonna, that's where kind of where our, our reactions are going to take place. 
we're gonna add one milliliter of household bleach and that's remember if you from the uh, reaction up or from this up here it's it's represented by this so um, then we're going to add that bleach to the dimethyl butane and then we're gonna add hydrochloric acid to our cylinder and up until then you can do this outside of the hood after this, this is when we're going to produce the chlorine gas, so you really want to put this under the hood after that. And you can probably perform all the other steps under the hood. It's better to be um, more precautious than less precautious. Okay, so here we have, uh, then we're going to slowly add the hydrochloric acid to the dimethyl butane and bleach. And you're going to then see bubbling. And once it stops, you shake and vent several times and then you're gonna uh, initiate the reaction with uh, UV light. So it kind of shows a little procedure on how to set up the UV um, initiation step. And after we irradiate it for five minutes under the UV light, uh, we are gonna take our aqueous lower layer, and, or it's gonna separate into an aqueous lower layer and an upper organic layer. And the top layer will proceed uh, and yield about 10% um, of, two four, of the 2,4-dimethylbutane um, and leave, an, leave about 90% left in the other layer because it's the less dense aqueous layer. And so then we're going to have more bubbling and you're going to add some potassium carbonate to neutralize your acid and effervescent just means uh, bubbling essentially. So once the bubbling stops, um, you're going to shake it and vent several times. And then we're going to use a pipette to transfer the top layer into a 2 milliliter vial and just essentially dry out that sample. And then we're going to submit it for GC analysis. And so remember, we ran, uh, or we're going to run a gas chromatography similar to, to what we did uh, bef in the previous labs. Um, and what, this is kind of what we're expecting to get is a 14% of this, uh, or sorry, of, of this guy, which I've drawn right here. So you're going to get much, or sorry, I've drawn right here. So the 14% is going to be for the tertiary carbon or tertiary hydrogen because it's going to be more difficult to bond to that, to that hydrogen or to replace that hydrogen. And you're going to expect a much larger percent, 86%, to be of this compound right here because the chlorine can easily attack this primary hydrogen. And so you will calculate it with, uh, you'll do G GCMS and see what you get, and the rest should be calculations. And so this week we're actually going to be doing two labs. So I'm a little bit tired of talking, so I'm going to take a quick break, and then we'll go over experiment seven.